Hey guys, DIY Jeff here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to replace an alternator on a 2004 Honda Odyssey. This procedure is applicable for years 1999 through 2004. There is one slight difference. In the 1999 through 2001 models, the tensioner pulley is accessed by a nut on the tensioner pulley itself. Whereas on the 2002 through 2004 models, the nut is located below the tensioner pulley and is accessed from underneath the car. And that's what I'll be showing you today. But all the other steps I'm going to show you are the same for 1999 through 2004 models. I've read in many forums and watched many YouTube videos that show that you have to pull the tensioner pulley in order to pull the alternator because of one of the, the bolts that you access is in a location that's behind the tensioner pulley. But I'm gonna show you today how you can get around that. These steps I'm showing you are going to be the least evasive and the quickest way to replace the alternator. So let's get started. While the majority of this job is done with common hand tools, there is one tool that's important to have to make the job easier. It's a serpentine belt pulley tool for releasing the tensioner pulley so the serpentine belt can be removed. Before jacking up the front of the vehicle, be sure to chalk the back wheels. Now jack up the vehicle, being sure that the jack is on a part of the vehicle's frame. I'm jacking it up on the passenger side because that's the side the tensioner pulley and the alternator are on. Place a jack stand just behind the front passenger tire. There is a notch designed just for a jack stand. Then lower the jack so the vehicle is firmly resting on the jack stand. Before starting engine work, it's always a good idea to remove the negative battery cable from the terminal. I'm replacing my battery too, so I went ahead and pulled the whole battery. To gain better access to the alternator, remove the plastic valve cover that is held in place by four 10 millimeter bolts. You'll need a deep socket or an extension because two of the bolts are recessed. The cover then just lifts off. Using a flat blade screwdriver, there are two retaining clips that need to be turned 90 degrees counterclockwise and then the front cover can be removed. To gain better access for removing the alternator, the brake fluid reservoir can be wiggled loose from its mount. Be careful not to wiggle it too hard as the last thing you want to have happen is that the brake line hoses come loose. The overflow coolant reservoir easily slides out and can be moved out of the way. Here I'm pointing out the tensioner pulley bolt that sits directly below the tensioner pulley. This angle is from underneath the vehicle looking up. There is no way to access this from the top side of the engine. Takes a bit of maneuvering, but use the tensioner pulley tool with a 19 millimeter socket and pull down counterclockwise on the tool to release the belt tension. Then using your free hand, pull the belt off the lower pulley. With the tension released from the top side, you can now remove the belt from the alternator. Here I'm pointing out a wiring harness bracket that sits on top of the alternator and it's held in with one 10 millimeter bolt. It easily comes loose to remove and set aside. There are two mounting bolts that hold the alternator in place. The one on the right is a 12 millimeter bolt and the one on the left is 14 millimeters. I'm removing the top bolt first, but the order really doesn't matter. Removing these two bolts is all about leverage. If you have a longer ratchet, it would be easier to remove these bolts. The lower left bolt is much more difficult to remove since it sits behind the tensioner pulley, making access difficult. I found that the easiest way to loosen it using tools that I own is to put the closed end of a 14 millimeter wrench on it and then take a 17 millimeter wrench and link them together to create more leverage. 
This worked out pretty good for me. Once the bolt breaks loose, it's not too difficult to just use the 14mm wrench to loosen it the rest of the way. If you have a ratcheting closed end wrench like this, it makes quick work of it. Once the bolt comes loose, you may need to support the underside of the alternator with your hand as you maneuver the alternator into a position that will allow you to remove the bolt around the tensioner pulley. On the back side of the alternator are two rubber boots that need to be slid back. One covers a grounding wire and the other a wiring harness. This is the grounding bolt which holds the wire on it with a ring connector secured by a 10 millimeter nut. Below you can see the green wiring clip that has a push release on top of it. It's a bit stubborn and will take some patience. Now you can start wiggling the alternator out. It's a bit slow and also a tedious process, and it does take some more of your patience. But as you'll see in a few moments, it will come out. It's up to the surface now and needs a bit more coaxing. Be careful as you maneuver it around the brake reservoir fluid hoses. You don't want those to come off. It's always a good idea to do a side-by-side -side comparison of an old part with the new. It can save a lot of headache to spot a problem before you put it in. Putting the new alternator in is the reverse process of pulling it out, with the exception that it's easier to put the ground wire on and clip in the wiring harness if you put the two mounting bolts in first. The alternator is now loosely in place. Put the bolts back in by hand first, remembering that the longer 14mm bolt is on the bottom left. I've got both bolts in and hand tightened, and I'm getting it as tight as I can now with the wrench. Here I'm using the same two wrench technique I showed when loosening the bolt. It's not possible to get a torque wrench on the bolt, so do your best to hand tighten it to as close to 25 foot pounds as you can. The upper bolt is accessible with a torque wrench, so tighten this bolt to 16 foot-pounds. Now, clip in the wiring harness.
Use the 10 millimeter nut to secure the electrical cable ring connector onto the stud. Be careful not to drop the nut. Ask me how I know this. Tighten the nut with a 10 millimeter deep socket. Here you can see that the nut is on and tightened. Make sure to put the rubber boots back over the wiring clip and the stud. One last 10 millimeter bolt to secure the wiring harness to the top of the alternator. Now you can put the belt back on. Start from the top side and run the belt under the tensioner pulley and over the alternator. From underneath the vehicle, pull down on the tensioner pulley tool to provide the slack needed to run the belt under and around the bottom pulley. Once you release the tensioner pulley tool, the belt should be tight again. Reconnect the battery cables. Start up the vehicle and check to make sure the belt isn't making any unusual noises and that it's turning the alternator. Lastly, put the valve cover plastic housing back on, starting with the small front one first. Be sure not to over tighten the four bolts. They should be snug, but you don't want to strip them as they are being secured into aluminum, which is a softer metal and susceptible to stripping. Jack the vehicle back up, remove the jack stand, and lower the vehicle. And don't forget to remove the wheel chocks. If you like this video or this video was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. Also, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you'll get notified every time I upload a new video.